Welcome to All Late Show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. We got a hell of a show tonight. We blockbuster guests. We got Lupita Nyongo and Martin Freeman. Lupita is coming to us from Kenya. Martin Freeman coming to us from London. We are truly international at this point. I'm impressed. No one else seems to be impressed. <laughs> Evie's here. Hello, my darling. Hello, I'm very impressed. Thank you very much. That's all you want to do is impress your girl. Hey, folks. Can you feel it? America has a bit of a pep in its step and hopefully soon a shot in its arm because the vaccine rollout is on a roll in Michigan and Connecticut. All residents 16 and older can get the vaccine starting April 5th. Great news, Connecticut teens. You're going to prom. Bad news. Moms and dads want to come, too, because we're sick of being home, and we want to put on fancy clothes and have enchantment under the sea. Did you, what, who'd you go to prom with? We didn't have prom. I went to an all-girls school. You didn't have a dance? You, Sadie Hawkins. Who'd you like, did you have anything like that? Junior, senior. Junior, senior. Who'd you go to junior, senior with? I don't remember. You don't remember. It was Al Phillips, wasn't it? It was Al Phillips. When you can't remember, it was no, Al who? It was Champ. It was Champ Yarborough? I think so. Hi, Champ. <laughs> Hi, Champ. Good to see you. She dated a guy named Champ. What chance do I have in high school? She's dating a guy named Champ. Stop. What? Stop what? There's no such thing as bad publicity. I'm just saying the man has a name that sounds like a winner. What was the theme? What was the, did you have a theme? I think our little, I think our ours literally was enchantment under the sea. We would, so the senior, the junior, the girls' junior class would hold a party for the girls' senior class, and we had a theme. Our theme was Sound of Music. Your theme was the musical Sound of Music. Yeah. Who were the Nazis? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on. The boys. <laughs> the boys. Okay. Some states are moving even faster today. Ohio announced everyone 40 and over is eligible starting Friday. That's right, starting this weekend, Ohio's 40 and over. Crowd can get back to the clubs and start rubbing Buckeyes. Despite vaccines becoming more available, there's still one thing holding Americans back. Americans. Because in a CBS poll, a third of Republicans said they would not be vaccinated. Come on, Republicans. Not everything is political. How do we convince you that you want it? Would it feel safer if the vaccine was administered by an AR-15? Many of the Republicans polled cited distrust of government as a reason not to be vaccinated. They worry the vaccines were produced too quickly. Duh! It was produced quickly because all of science dropped everything because your president wanted them to, and they did everything right with the clinical trials. You wouldn't stand in front of your burning house and tell the fire department, hold on there, hold on, you fellows got here suspiciously fast. And I read on Facebook that water is just milk from invisible cows. What if my house is lactose intolerant? Some people think the last president should say something to convince his followers, but Biden isn't interested. The thing that has more impact than anything Trump would say to the MAGA folks is what the local doctor what the local preachers, what the local people in the community say. Got to talk to the paper boy, Jack. Milkman, local washerwoman. Old Jasper who drives a Wells Fargo wagon. His horse, Betsy, ain't no dummy either. Come on. <laughs> Want to go to prom? Yes. All right. I'll pick you up in the Studebaker. I'll bring the Mustang. We'll go to the Mustang. <laughs> he doesn't know he has, a, he has a Corvette. Oh, I thought it was a Mustang. He has a Corvette, man. One potential side effect of the coronavirus vaccine is that people are exposed to the idea that government can get things done. But Senate Republicans have a way to inoculate themselves from progress. It's called the filibuster. In its current form, the filibuster allows a minority party to put the kibosh on bills that arrive without the support of 60 senators. But in the last decade or so, it has gone from being a rarely used tool to a core element of Senator Mitch McConnell's strategy as the Republican minority leader. No surprise there. Republicans are renowned for their rarely used tools. But here's the thing. The Senate decides what the rules are, and the Democrats control the Senate, and they wouldn't need 60 votes to roll back the filibuster. Democrats would need a simple majority. That's right. You can't filibuster changing the filibuster rules. It's the upper chamber's version of you can't wish for infinite wishes, which you also can't do because Mitch McConnell would filibuster it. Democrats haven't done anything about the filibuster yet. But there are murmurs and rumors, which is enough to upset Mitch McConnell, 
who rose from the dead and from his seat to threaten to grind the Senate to a halt with procedural shenanigans. Well, let me say this very clearly for all 99 of my colleagues. Nobody serving in this chamber can even begin, can even begin to imagine what a completely scorched earth Senate would look like. I'll take my chances. <laughs> the last time the United States used scorched earth, the union beat your guys. He McConnelled on. This chaos would not open up an express lane to liberal change. It would not open up an express lane for the Biden presidency to speed into the history books. The Senate would be more like a hundred car pileup. Nothing moving. It's already happening, you idiot. And the filibuster is why it's happening. If you threaten to blow off my head with a shotgun and I say, let's take away that idiot's shotgun, it's not much of a threat to say, if you do, I'll shoot you in the face five times with a crossbow. Speaking of, you're very generous, speaking of maniacs on Capitol Hill, there's been some important arrests of traitorous malcontents who attacked the legislature on January 6th. And I'll give you all the latest deets in tonight's edition of Roundup Roundup. They're utterly despicable cowards. <laughs> First up on the Roundup, the FBI arrested a security contractor at a naval base who was known to most of his co-workers as a white supremacist and Nazi sympathizer. Now hold on one minute. Calling someone a Nazi sympathizer is a pretty big accusation. How do you know that he act... Okay. All right. <laughs> little on the nose, buddy. Also a little under the nose. The chip off the old Reich is named Timothy Hale Cusinelli, known from now on as Timothy Heil Mussolini. And ever since the riot, federal authorities have been on the hunt for the two people who sprayed chemical irritants at the police which may have led to the tragic death of Officer Brian Sicknick. Well, Sunday, the FBI arrested two men, West Virginia resident and guy who alphabetized his VHS porn collection, George Tanios, and intern at the strip club, <laughs> Julian Cater. Cater and Tanios are childhood friends who grew up in New Jersey, and they thoughtfully left a lot of evidence for the cops. For instance, Tanios lives in Morgantown, West Virginia, where he's the owner of Sandwich University, known for its fierce rivalry with Sloppy Joe Polytech. <laughs> In fact, on social media, Tanios calls himself the Sandwich Nazi. Okay, at this point, I think you can drop the sandwich. Tanios restaurant bills itself as the king of the fat sandwich because they look like this one, the Fat Mountaineer, which includes cheesesteak, burger, mozzarella sticks, chicken tender, jalapeno popper, bacon, and egg. He's not kidding about the Nazi part. With that much cholesterol, it's a hoagie that should be prosecuted at the Hagee. <laughs> now, this is important information because during the riot, Tanios was wearing a sweatshirt with Sandwich University on it. Don't you hate it when people walking around bragging about their fancy lunch alma mater when the rest of us had to eat our safety sandwich? Tanios' buddy, Cater, is also a restaurateur. He owns a smoothie bowl restaurant in State College, Pennsylvania called Fruit Doubles. Okay, two things. First, how did these guys become friends? The smoothie is the natural enemy of the fat sandwich. Two, you can't put a smoothie in a bowl, okay? The moment it hits the bowl, it's fruit soup. And don't tell me the tomatoes are fruit. I'll see you in hell with these two guys. Come on, what's a fruit? What's a fruit? What's a smoothie bowl? I don't know what a smoothie bowl is. And if you don't know, it doesn't exist. <laughs> Always pushing the fruit over here. <laughs> Cater's looking for a harsh punishment because since he's not a U.S. citizen, a guilty verdict would likely result in his deportation. That must have given him some mixed emotions. I can't believe I'm about to get deported. On the other hand, I got an immigrant deported. Woo! The rioters aren't the only ones under scrutiny. The Capitol Police just suspended an officer who had an anti-Semitic document in plain sight at a Capitol Police checkpoint. That is shocking. That is horrifying. Anti-Semitism has no place in Congress outside Marjorie Taylor Greene demanding NASA baptize the Jewish space laser. The questionable document in question 
is the protocols of the meetings of the learned elders of Zion, which the Anti-Defamation League calls a classic in paranoid racist literature. That's actually one of the blurbs on the back, along with a great beach read, Mel Gibson. <laughs> Fallout from the riot has also hurt Wisconsin senator and drunk uncle insisting he won't drop the baby like last time, Ron Johnson. On Thursday, Johnson went on talk radio to say, riot schmiet. On January 6th, I never felt threatened because I didn't. And mainly because I knew that even though those thousands of people that, that were uh, marching to the Capitol yeah. were trying to pressure people like me to vote the way they wanted me to vote, I knew those are people that love this country, that uh, truly respect law enforcement, would never do anything to, to break a law. And so I wasn't concerned. What the hell are you talking about? They injured over 100 policemen, blinding, crushing, killing. So I guess you're saying they use that flagpole to inflict blunt force respect? Well, Senator, you seem to have a lot in common with them because they're not the only ones smearing their crap all over Capitol Hill. Despite knowing better, Johnson didn't. Now, had the tables been turned, Joe, this could be in trouble. Had the tables been turned and President Trump won the election, and those were tens of thousands of Black Lives Matter and Antifa protesters, I might have been a little concerned. Holy stupid. They're trying to kill you, but you feel safe because they're your race. It reminds me of the immortal words of Nathan Hale. I regret I have but one life to give for my country, but on the bright side, none of the people hanging me are Irish. <laughs> a lot of people call Johnson's racist comments racist, so yesterday he went on local Wisconsin radio with a very strange defense for his attack on Black Lives Matter. Remember, those leftist, leftist activists, those protesters, that the, some of them turned violent, turned into riots, so a lot of them are white. So there's, there's no racism involved in this at all. Nothing says not a racist more than looking at Black Lives Matter protests and counting all the white people. 11, 12, <laughs> 13, whew, I'm not a racist. <laughs> then Johnson said he was surprised by the reaction to his comments. It has nothing to do with race. It has everything to do with riots. Completely did not anticipate that anybody could interpret what I said as racist. Yes, who could have anticipated? Maybe this guy? Now, had the tables been turning, Joe, this could get me in trouble. You don't get any credit for your bad behavior just because you predicted it. I know this is going to get me in trouble, but everybody get down on the ground. This is a robbery. Now put the money in the bags before the cops come to cancel me. It's also been a bad time for a New York governor and middle school coach explaining why you're lucky he's dating your mom, Andrew <laughs> Cuomo. Last week, another woman came forward with allegations of sexual harassment against the governor, making her the sixth to do so. And then over the weekend, there was a seventh woman. Two more, he wins a free Ronan Farrow profile. <laughs> then yesterday, former Cuomo aide Charlotte Bennett revealed to state investigators that when she worked with the governor, he had a preoccupation with his hand size and what the large size of his hands indicated. Huh. Well, for the answer, we go to the Late Show's hand expert. What does it mean when someone talks about their hand size? Tiny penis. <laughs> Thank you. What's his name? Lefty. Handy? Lefty. Le lefty. He is a helper. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Lupita Nyong'o and Martin Freeman. But when we return, meanwhile, stick around.